My name is Ryan Tierney. This is my JavaScript project, uh, single, single page application. It is a uh, Ruby on Rails backend API with a JavaScript, CSS, and HTML front end. Um, so that was the project I was tasked with creating. Um, I created a, a spoof of the, the world's hardest game, which is like a little game on a website called Cool Math for Kids where you control a little square and you have to uh, get that square to the finish without touching any of the, uh, the other objects. So this is it right here. And just to show you how it works, it, I control the yellow square and my job is to get it down here to this, this goal. Um, if you touch any of the red squares, you get sent back to uh, position of zero, zero. Um, and then if you get all the way to the finish, All right, well, anyway, if you get down to this, uh, this bottom square, it, it'll show a little uh, message that says you win. And then uh, I also, using the, uh, the, the backend API, I was able to create a sign up, login, and comment feature. Um, and you can see here that the comments are displayed below. Um, so if you sign up with a new name that isn't already in the database, Let's say uh, Harry, uh, you can sign up and then I'll change your name to over here and user to Harry and then we'll change your high score to zero as level is finished. And then again, once you finish the game, let's see if we can get through this real quick. Let's show you. Uh, okay. So you get the little message and then it changes it to one level finished. Um, and then we have the controls up here. You can't see because my face is in the way. Um, but it tells you uh, the uh, W, A, S, T keys. Uh, w is up, S is down, uh, D is right, and A is left. Um, and then once you're logged in or you're signed up, you can, uh, you can post a comment. So you see Ryan, myself, and my wife, Vanessa, we can make comments here. Um, let's say, uh, anything you want um, and it's an unlimited amount of characters or anything like that there's no, there's no requirements on that um, just make a generic kind of this so this game sucks it's not very good it's not a very good game um, and then it appears here at the bottom I clicked it again twice so it came up twice uh, and then if you're logged in as Harry but say I'm actually Ryan um, Type my name into the login and then check my name and because I've already finished the game as me, I have the one level finished as well. Um, if you try to uh, play as someone who doesn't exist, uh, let's say um, Brandon, it won't work. Uh, I should probably get an error message in there, but I don't have one at the moment. But it does tell you that the uh, it, it doesn't tell you anything, but it, uh, it won't let you log in. Um, just to show you the code a little bit, run you through what I did. Um, we have the backend API here. Uh, I have my controllers. I have a comments controller with uh, index, create, and destroy uh, routes. Um, and then create, destroy for sessions, and then index, show, create, increase level, and uh, the private method for user params for our users controller. Um, our models, we have uh, comments belong to a user, and a user has many comments. Uh, we Validate the presence of text in the comment field um, to make sure that there is text in there because we don't want to post blank comments. And then we validate the presence for username with uniqueness and presence. Um, and then we have our routes here in the config folder. Um, we have a, a post route for login for the sessions create, and we have a logout for sessions destroy. We have a custom route for increased levels finished, which is how we get to increase once we finish the game. Uh, and then we have our resources for users and comments, and then uh, and then comments by itself. Um, all right, so that's basically the back end. And then we have our, our front end uh, JavaScript. Um, we have, we start up here, we have a players class. 
minimized. Um, we have our constructor um, that defines the width and the max speed uh, and the positions that they start at on the X and Y axes. Um, you can set the color here with draw. I used canvas to animate the uh, draw the, the icons and enemies and stuff for the game. Um, let's see. And then you set all the movements up uh, with uh, with event listeners. Um, actually, that's down here. Uh, and then we we uh, created different enemies. So there's wall enemies, which is the uh, these here. Um, and then you have your vertical enemies and your horizontal enemies. I just I thought it would be easier to separate those into their own classes, just because I didn't want to have to complicate the code in terms of their movement. Um, so and then you, you know, the same thing with the, the players is you, you set up the uh, the width and the height and the speed. The walls obviously don't move, so they have a speed of zero, which I probably don't even need that. Um, we have our update delta time. Um, and then we set up our collisions. Um, so where is it? At? Where is that? All right, yeah, collisions. So if the player collides with enemy one, the first rectangle that's going up and down vertically, um, it resets the X position to zero and the uh, Y position to zero. So basically, it starts you back at the start. And I did that for each um, enemy as well as the walls, uh, just to make it a little bit harder. Um, and then we have our goal, which is the yellow square at the bottom. Um, and the collision between that and the goal is you get the uh, win function and it updates your levels completed. Um, and then it resets your player's position back to zero. The game stops. Um, all right. We have our input handler, which is where I created the event listeners. Um, so you have your your A, W, D, S keys, but you also have some other movements in here for like diagonal movement. Um, I just decided to put these in there for fun. Um, so those are P, O, L, and the uh, uh, semicolon. And if you do that, you can move at a uh, at an angle, at a diagonal pattern, not an angle. Um, these are more for fun than practical use or anything. Um, back to the code. Um, we have our game class, uh, which we set the, uh, the width and height of the canvas or the, what, what you can play within the game. The canvas is set in the HTML. Um, we have our start function, um, which uh, sets the start position, or the, sets the positions for all of our enemies and walls, as well as the goal. Um, we have some update delta time, uh, or the draw context. Um, right, and then we have a global scope where we uh, set up our sign up and login buttons uh, to, to constants. Um, and we add a uh, event listener for clicking so that uh, it submits it when you click the button. Let's see what else we need to go over. And we have, our, our, of course, our, our fetch requests to get our comments and users from the database uh, for login and for sign up, and then as well as the uh, the update level is completed. Um, and then we've got our comments here. Uh, so you have a function for a new comment, which uh, cr uh, creates a new comment. And then we have a function for get comments, which pulls the comments from the database. Um, yeah, that basically covers it. This has been my, this is my project. Um, again, it's just a little, just a little game. Um, I had a lot of fun make, making it. I, I uh, honestly want to take some time to make this a little bit more challenging. Let me see if I, could, I have the, the drawing the canvas working canvas. Um, I tried to get uh, a smile, uh, some some styling on the on the square to make it look a little bit more personalized, but um, I, I uh, it was a, taking a little too much more time than I had to focus on this. Um, but yeah, that's my project. Uh, I look forward to my review, and uh, I appreciate. Um, you guys take on the time to watch this. Thank you.